it's quite amazing every time in every sport when you say it's like the most niche sport when you go down in the in the from the professional to the third fourth league it's amazing the amount of game they are played and the, the, yeah. and the most amazing I think is the youth market in the US it's It's, a, it's like a, a religious. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by JVentures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leumi Tech, sponsored by Hippo Insurance, Opwest Labs, Turing, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Sports and technology, what a beautiful intersection. I am joined today by Gal Oz, the CTO and co-founder of Pixelot, the world's leading company for fully autonomous video and data production for sports events. Pixelot produces a new game around the globe every 30 seconds. He served for 10 years with an elite R&D unit in the intelligence core of the IDF, during which Gal worked with different visual platforms to capture information from UAV to satellites. Prior, he was the founding group member of SportVU and served as the CEO and R&D manager of the company until it was sold to U.S.-based company Stats in 2008. Gal Oz, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for hosting me. I'm really excited to have you with me today. Um, the founder and CTO of, of Pixelot, uh, you, working on autonomous video and data production for sports events. I believe uh, that you do a new game every 30 seconds or so. Uh, you've served for more than 10 years in an R&D unit in the IDF. Uh, previously, you were in the founding group of SportVU, um, and you uh, saw it being sold to, U- to the US-based company Stats in 2008. Uh, and I'm curious in this next 20 minutes to chat with you a little bit about Your personal journey throughout um throughout you know the sports industry and why you chose sports tech and what have you learned from your different uh, endeavors there uh, and a little bit also about pixel apps so before we do all that gal tell me a little bit about yourself and how do you find yourself in the sports tech industry so uh, a little bit about myself i'm a uh, did a the quite maybe we can call it the usual technician uh, process in in israel i i went uh, i finished uh, high school i went to the atuda learning uh, before the army learning a uh, degree in uh, electrical engineering then i joined the uh, uh, the the army and served as a, actually as an engineer but it was quite a fascinating journey i spent there 10 years eventually I was working with uh, everything that regarding uh, videos, picture from uh, UAVs to satellite uh, to uh, imagery. And, and I, over there, I, I, I call it, I, I did my first uh, few startups in this uh, area of the expertise. And then uh, during the Army, I also did my master's degree in biomechanical engineering, bio, biomedical engineering, specifically in the, in the vision aspect. And I was mm-hmm. uh, thinking when I will uh, leave the army, I will uh, save the world from cancer or something like this. But, uh, you know, things happened and I found myself joining uh, Dr. Miki Tamir, who was already has uh, this uh, company, SportView. And I joined him and together we, we built this amazing company that's doing uh, uh, tracking of players in real time and generate statistics. And then I... Uh, I, I called it, uh, I got into this uh, Bermuda Triangular, where uh, you have both uh, sport, which is fascinating, you have television, which is amazing, and you have top technology. And since then, I really, deep inside, uh, after sp- uh, sport, you uh, now I have Pixelot, which is exactly more or less the same industry, and uh, really hard to get out of it. It's an amazing, an amazing <laughs> industry. So tell me a little bit more about this industry. How, how, do, how does the integration between sports and technology actually work? Uh, you know, sports at the end, you know, conceptually, it's a very low tech uh, type of activity. Uh, how does one integrate tech with it and, and in what regards? So sport, eventually, you know, it's the atlas in the middle, it's the atlas in the middle that, that you, that about the human uh, spirit. But I think the nice thing is that tech can surround it. And integrate very nicely so um, with sport view for example what we did is uh, is getting a very detailed uh, statistics and analytics about the game that completely changed the way 
uh, people analyze NBA games and things like that. Uh, and it's uh, improved the way that the, the player were, uh, were uh, playing and, and, and improved the, the game itself. Uh, mm-hmm. In pixel art, I think it's even more amazing because what we do is actually democratize the sport. And, and, and just a few days ago, we got a very, for me, it was emotional. We had a big project now in Africa and we got a video of you know, an African village with a TV watching a game that was produced by Pixelot of their local uh, local team. So their their team never were was was filmed in TV because nobody care about it. But uh, when we have the Pixelot system that you can produce a, a, an event that will cost you only a few dollars, now it's really democratized the sport. And this is how we we change the the way people. Enjoy sport, but also enjoy uh, improve the way people uh, all over the world can see the athletes from Africa. Wide. So walk me walk me a little bit through the pain point that you were solving. So so I, I have this image in my head of what you were describing, and it sounds amazing. What what is actually the what trend does 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 this point to that that needed yeah. pixel art? To so come you know we all watch sports, you know NBA, NFL, all these sports. So. If you take all the registered sport in the world, like all, not the you and your friends going to sport to, to play uh, in the local field, but but all the sport has been registered, uh, less than one percent of the sport is being televised, and the reason is obvious because television costs money. Bringing the most simple production will cost you a few thousand of dollars, and and for that you need tens or hundreds of uh, thousand people watching it in order to get a uh, uh, commercial and all this stuff. So, so this is the, the traditional market. So what Pixelot is after is not the 1% of the already covered sports, but after the 99% of the non- uncovered sport. And we cover it in the way which is dramatically lower cost than before, fully automated, very easy to install, to operate. And then suddenly you have like, a whole blue ocean of content that you can create business around. Because at the end, you, you will produce it if you have a way to, to monetize it. Sometimes uh, it can be, for example, we have many teams uh, in, Scotland, in Scotland, for example, that are from the third league, and we have their system there. And when the COVID uh, epidemic uh, start, they had no way, uh, and they went back to play, but the fans wasn't allowed to join. So these teams, all their money were from fans coming into the venue. But now there are no fans coming in. So they were like almost on right. a back, bankrupt uh, a period. But then we built them an OTT platform that they can charge money for this. And you see amazing places where like a, a town of uh, 8,000 people get 800 people paying f- to watch the town uh, soccer game. And it's bring them back wow. money, and they can survive this 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 time. And uh, we see it all over. It's it's quite amazing the the revolutionary it's do for the fan experience and for the team themselves. So, what does Pixelot actually do? How how does Pixelot actually enable at the end for a game to be? I understand at the end that you know the the big impact that's happening here is that you're you're basically an enabler <clears throat> for the ninety nine percent of games that weren't. Uh, you know, featured before on streaming and television to do just yeah. that, right? Yeah. So we give a, basically an end-to-end solution. It starts with our, we have a, our core, uh, our camera, which is panoramic. So we capture the game in, in a 180 degree uh, and we in a very high resolution. So imagine we, we have a super resolution camera that, that covered the whole field in a very, very high resolution without any moving part. Out of it, we analyze the game. We know where the ball is, where the player is, what is the game state, whether it's now a corner, wow. there is a free kick. And, and then we decide, we, we mimic the camera, the, the human camera, uh, cameraman, and we decide what is the best wow. frame to take. And this happened 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And this is how we create a movement that looks like a TV. Uh, a great wow. story, I mean, where we feel good, we try to create, to, to make it look like a real TV. And for example, 
a few days ago, I had an interview, a candidate for one of the positions, and uh, his son is playing in a team that using our system, and they uh, charge money for this. But they didn't tell told the parents uh, that it's automatic system. They told that if you want to see that your, kid, uh, your kid's uh, game, because you cannot come to the game, you need to pay uh, X amount to see the game. And uh, when the, the parents were able to go back to the field, he told me that he came and he looked for the cameraman because he knew that there's supposed to be a cameraman. And then they explained, no, it's not a cameraman. It's just this system upstairs. And this for us means that we did a good job. We don't now look to do wow. like, we are not looking to do a, a Super Bowl production with the, the all the, the, the 40 cameras with super slow-mo. We want to give, as I always say, we are giving the bread and butter of the t- sport television, not the cherry on the on the cake. I, I think that's amazing, and I and I can honestly see already the reaction of human nature feeling like a fryer. That oh, what do you mean that it's just a technology? No, Actually, I'm, I'm paying exactly this. He said, "Wow, that yeah. Maccabi Tel Aviv did a very good uh, uh, <laughs> choice not to tell the parents because." She, if they if the parents would know, they would start saying, "Ah, we don't want to pay because it's automatically." But you know, exactly. Even automatically, <laughs> you have people developing, you have people uh, build it. But if you bring a person, it wow. will be no, no, that uh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So so and and it happened in in a small uh, maybe a field in uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv, but it also happened in in fifteen others, fifteen thousand other location in the world. In, uh, in uh, I think, around uh, 8,000 uh, high schools, around uh, uh, leagues across the world. It can be from, we support 14 different sports. So it can be uh, field hockey, uh, lacrosse, uh, uh, rugby, uh, any type of sport you can imagine they play in, in, in a field. We were there and we, we covered it. Do you do you predict that you know if we look a few years down the line, then all the sports games, also the NBA and the NFL, they'll all be automated through technology and no cameramen, just just physical, just the devices? No, I think that the, for the the premium sports, I I don't think there is enough in a initiative to uh, to make it automatically because the requirements are quite high. And the and the scale is not big. So where autonomy, mm. autonomy is important. When you can, you have a huge scale. So if you can uh, now uh, uh, reduce the price, it will affect. It have a huge effect. Uh, so and and then it become enabler. But for the so, so you you will have maybe portion of it automate automated. But at the end, I don't believe that the the super the the, the NBA the the Champion League this type will be automated. But I do think that, uh, and I see it already, that, that the automation will go uh, higher and higher. Okay, so now we have, for example, a baseball mm-hmm. system that already have two angles, and we have switching between the angles. We will introduce replays. We will introduce other aspects. So at the end, we take all the binning blocks of production, and once we, cannot, we can automate it, we push it into automatic production. And this has happened both in different sports we cover, different... We also cover not only the sport and not only the live stream but we we'll also extra, extra, ex, uh, take out the high uh, the highlight moment and generate a, a highlight clip in in some of the sports like in basketball we not we can also give a personal highlight for the kids that made the the basket so when the game ends you can we can generate a clip for number 3 and and send it to his parents so imagine how a fully wow. automatic so imagine how that, that's yeah. amazing. So, so it will become it. It will it make the sport much more personalized, make the the, the parents and the kids they enjoy it together, and it's fun, a lot of fun. So, how many games have you streamed so far? Actually, uh, on July we are going to have the one million uh, uh, wow. event, one million game event. It's going to be a quite a nice event we are uh, running. Um, but it's amazing. The number is amazing. We are by far the the biggest sport platform content provider today in the world. Um, wow! Much bigger than ESPN and all the, the the big guys. But because if you count them 
by the hour of production. Of course, if you count them wow. by the, the eyeballs, it's a different story because you can have a, an NBA, a Super Bowl, one game of Super Bowl can be uh, like, like of course. I don't know how many, but if you count by pro- pro- processing hour or production hour, we are by far the, the biggest one. That is really, yeah. really cool. And it's Dom. amazing that, because at the really, end, really it's, cool. a, it's a huge machine. I see it always. I'm, I'm very technician. So everything I imagine is a machine. So, so this is a, a, a huge machine that is, has uh, spread all over the world with a very backend, a huge backend in the cloud that run anything automatically. Because I, I always explain, eventually when you have our system in the venue and you have a game tomorrow, it's as easy as a, an outlook appointment. You say tomorrow between four to six, I have a basketball game between this team and this team, submit, and that's all. You forget about it. All the things happen automatically, wow. including uh, uh, graphics, including the, the VOD, live VOD, notification to the parents, uh, live streaming, everything automatically. No, and, and honestly, Gal, it's, and I think you, you're touching on this, it's a data game beyond just the... Beyond just the footage and the, the live streaming, this ability to then personalize and then make and then extract and then you work in data you you 've done that in sports view uh, you, you know the importance of you know of, of following and being able to to identify s- specific players and specific trends and and you know I, I can only imagine let 's say out of the million games let 's say a quarter of them are soccer, and being able to then you know me- like even for fun measure statistics about how soccer games are run. And how yeah. you know tall versus short, fast versus slow. It, you know, I think there's there's going to be some really really interesting case studies that uh, you know I as a data scientist can just get excited thinking what I would want to do with this data. Uh, so that's very very cool. Definitely. What what is the next um, the next step in 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 this field in sports tech? So first of all, I mean uh, it's not like we cover. I mean we, we have as I said we have uh, amazing amount of uh, games. And actually, we are uh, from this 99 percent I'm talking about. We cover uh, barely few percentage. So, so I think that, that, yeah. that the, still, the challenge is still go be everywhere. So, so yep. I think uh, we are talking about maybe it's it's quite amazing every time in every sport when you say it's like the most niche sport when you go down in the in the from the professional to the third fourth league. It's amazing the amount of games that are played. And the, the, yeah. and the most amazing, I think, is the youth market in the U.S. It's, it's, a, it's like a, a religious. The, the way that they treat it <laughs> is like religious. And, and we're now introducing a, a product which is for this market. And we see that, that it has like a huge potential to, to be like a mul- multiplier of what we do now. Uh, and this is definitely our uh, first challenge to 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 be there everywhere with all the level from the ten years that are playing that is playing baseball in in uh, and and one of the father is the coach still can use us he can take a a goPro and put it and get a full production of the game out of it and uh, to, till the In Israel, you have the, the uh, men's uh, second team, uh, second leagues, the, the youth league, uh, going to be also other leagues that covered. So, so it's uh, quite amazing the, the spread and the different, different levels it's covered. I, th- I think that's exactly it. You, you know, when we're talking about that 1%, the, the, the lower you go in the level, the, the exponentially you have more yeah. games because, again, most so of us... So this is one uh, trend. Of, the connection between the One trend is, is, is really Sorry. be more, do more of what we do. The other is, is definitely what you're talking about, data, because uh, once you have all this data, all this video, extracting data, first of all, of usage and, and uh, build uh, this, uh, use it, it's amazing. And then also extract data from the inside of the game, it's amazing. So this data is also something we, we already working on. Uh, most of it automatically, some of it, uh, we have also process of, uh, of human intervention that doing breakdown of games, it's part of the services we can give. So it's quite amazing. Uh, uh, amazing. 
Gal, thank you so much. Uh, I I loved it. I I gained so much knowledge just from 19 short minutes. It's it's it, it it's mind-boggling to me how much I can get in in 19 minutes. I'm very thankful for spending this time with me. Uh, and I have three questions not about sports tech but about you, Gal, if you're ready for them. Go ahead. Going back to middle school or high school, what was your favorite subject? And I told you before, I think uh it was technical stuff, okay? Because uh, I think, and I think that I'm lucky because I'm not working. I'm having fun most of the time because this I'm doing what I like. So, uh, and it really started from the high school because over there I, I also uh, use it. So I can, you can call me a geek. Be, uh, go go I'll for do it. That. <laughs> but uh, With pride. I'm lucky because I'm doing what I like. Amazing. And uh, who would serve as an inspiration for you? Some sort of role model? Um, I would pick uh, maybe the most maybe very naive uh, answer or, or common answer, but uh, someone like uh, Bill Gates would, that, that took different approach and, and made an effect. Okay, because uh, I, I, maybe this is why I use iPhone from the first day it came out, but uh, I think it really changed a, a whole industry or a whole uh, uh, the way people are doing things. And I think that is what we do in Pixelot for sports. Uh, and it requires someone that is uh, can, can insist that he's, he knows what you're doing. And, and even if people uh, let him down at first. And what are three words that you would use to describe yourself? Uh, so maybe it's connected to what I said before. I, I see myself as maker. It means that, that uh, if people have ideas, I think I know how to make them a product, a company. In both of my company, I, I started when there was nothing. And both of them are, are, were a very successful company. Uh, I take it from the technical side. There are people that always I, I make sure they are on my side or, or, uh, that uh, that are taking it from the business side, which is I think it's uh, not exact, not the same specialties, but but uh, take an idea and make it happen. So I think this is a, mm-hmm. something very strong I have. Uh, it requires maybe this is the second word to be insist to insistent. I mean, uh, you fail and you hear no all the time and you have people say, you, told you all the time why, why it will not be in time, why it's not possible, why it's not a, a good idea. But uh, if you insist and you, you, you can convince them, then uh, uh, you can make it work. Uh, and and uh, the third world, I don't know how to say it exactly, but to grow people, to, to, to make people uh, grow. I think that uh, when, I, when I meet the right people, I, I, I love to make them grow. And I love that, uh, that to, to, to take them and, and you know, educate them and, and give them the, the right way to thought. Uh, demand a lot, but, uh, but uh, you find out that they give much more than they thought they can give. And I think this is a, mm-hmm. I think this is something I quite good at. Gal, toda raba. This was amazing. I, I loved it. Best of luck with, Thank you. Uh, with Pixelot. I, I'm already, you know, starting to, it's going to be crazy. And the, you know, the potential is endless. And when you're describing the, the, you know, the religious nature of the youth leagues in the US, I, I, could, I, I saw it. I felt it. I, I was a part of it. I, I'm pretty sure that I also played in Little League at some point. Yeah, you grew up uh, in, the, but, in, the, uh, it, in the U.S.? I, I spent a few years there in elementary school, and I played soccer, and I played baseball, and I played basketball in a Mormon church. And I know, I know what, you, what you're talking uh, about. You know, and it, it, I know that... Uh, we, we have a lot of... We have a big office in the U.S., and, and some of the parents there are exactly how the parents we, we, we aim for. So sometimes they can take the whole family fly to another place, have a weekend in hotel, just because the 10 years kid had a tournament in baseball that is the most boring thing in the earth. But 
it's it's i cannot imagine in israel someone doing it. well good thing that the us market has more than 300 million people and israel has 9 million so i yeah, think definitely. i think you're in the right place uh, but gal thank you very very much and stay safe and stay healthy thank bye you for bye. your time Thank you.